Hello, thanks for joining me for this video on how to analyse your game obviously after you've played it on lychess.org um, obviously there's lots of chess software out there that offer various types of analysis for your game but um, you may or may not know how to analyse your game and you may not have any software to analyse your game and um, you might be interested to know how to do it on live chess <laughs> after you've played a game that you might have lost or won and wanted to know what was going on in the game and what the computer analysis is actually telling you. Now first of all I am not a grandmaster I am not an expert in computer analysis I don't profess to be the guru of you know computer evaluations but um, I played on ICCF, which is the International Correspondence Chess Federation website, for quite a while against a lot of strong players, and you could use opening books, and you, you were able to use a computer. Actually, I don't really care what you use. Um, I didn't always use a computer, and often I didn't. But sometimes, for analysing my losses, I used a computer quite often to see where I went wrong. Anyway, so based on that, I've got a reasonably good grasp of what a computer is telling you and why. Um, so getting back on topic I have played a game and now I am looking at it in analysis mode on Lychess. When you finished your game on Lychess um, if you go to your profile page uh, it shows you your history of the games you've recently played so um, yeah, like this one here I played yesterday. I can open it up and at the bottom it will probably give me a button that says, uh, if I go to analysis board, on the right there it should be a button that says um, computer analysis available. Oh, in fact it's already done it for me. Okay, so I just wasted my time showing you that. I just wanted to show you the button that you pressed to get your computer analysis for your game, which you may not have known what that is. Anyway, let's get back to this game, which was a Sicilian Defence Hyper Accelerated Dragon, which I com got completely crushed and played pretty badly in. So, why do we need computer analysis for a game of chess? Well, if you want to improve, uh, there's no doubt that using a computer is a good idea because it's not the only way to improve obviously you should do other things but it will give you uh, speci especially where tactics are involved it will show you maybe where you missed a tactic or where where your opponent missed a tactic uh, going both ways as in you should have gone for a combination um, or you should have seen a combination so it's good from that perspective it will show you the truth of the position basically um, now you're, you've got to remember that computers, however powerful they are, are mostly only generating their analysis based on a brute force calculation of moves by just crunching, you know, if piece goes there, then this happens, and then piece goes there, and so on and so on. Um, they can't actually have any understanding of the chessboard from a sense of... Um, well, they can have positional interpretations and strategical features built into the way they make their analysis, but as far as you know, being able to really understand what's going on, they're still not that good. And uh, many people don't think computers, even the strongest ones, play end games very well. For example, um, anyway, I'm going off topic again. Let's just look at this game quickly and see how it would help me understand where I went wrong. So. This analysis is good because the first thing is you don't want to lose a game out of the opening. It's very important. And it makes me quite upset when you hear things like, oh, you don't want to waste your time studying openings. And It's all about the end game in chess. And you must, if you want to become a good player, you need to look at the end game. Well, I don't actually 100% agree with that. I think it's very, very important, the end game. But if you're losing the game out of the opening because you don't know a bit of theory or, or you're getting swindled, then you forget the end game because it's over. 
you're not even going to get to an end game. When I played 20 over the board games last year, and I think I had one end game. I think in amateur chess, the end game is. Oh, I mean, this is just my experience, and somebody will probably disagree with me. I don't. I think there's more chance of there being a mistake in the opening than um, and you getting a chance to win the game and capitalise on that than playing. You know, waiting to get to the end game, a perf trying to play a perfect opening and a perfect middle game, and then using your superior quote marks end game knowledge to grind down your opponent. Sure, that would be a wonderful thing to do and very very satisfying but the practical reality of chess is I think at amateur club level is the opening and middle game plan the opening uh, understanding sorry in the middle game plan is probably more important I feel to a certain level anyway so this analysis tells me if I'm playing my opening okay so as you can see if it's a plus the computer is happy with white and if it's a minus as you can see, there are not that many minuses. It thinks black's better, basically. Now, we don't want to get too carried away with that evaluation. 0 0.2. Now, a computer roughly values uh, 1, a pawn as 1, give or take. You know, different computers have different levels of evaluation. Um, some computers might give a pawn 0 0.8. They might give it 1.1. .1. They might give an E and a D pawn 1. They might give an H and A pawn 0.8 do you see what I mean in an end game they might give the wing pawn a higher evaluation because an end a wing pawn is sometimes harder to stop than a central pawn so you can see that although this is a guide to evaluation it doesn't mean it's all over for black because now white is on 0, is on plus 4 0.4 it's just saying that white is slightly better and white should be slightly better because in the opening white has the first move and therefore has the advantage and should have the initiative and basically should be better in quote marks so let's get on with this analysis so he brings his knight out g6 which is the beginning of the hyper accelerated dragon and he goes for bishop c4 and he's playing perfectly sensible developing moves here and he thinks that white the computer thinks that white's already slight half a pawn better but as you can see the evaluation constantly changes, you know. Um, now, um, let's hopefully my computer will catch up here. Yeah, so we've got pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, knight f6. This is all pretty standard stuff. Now, bishop g5, here we go. So the computer thinks that this is a mistake. It thinks it's, it's worth a pawn, this mistake, which is interesting. And it is worth a mistake. It is worth a pawn because I can actually, I think I can play knight takes pawn here, and I'm better. Although he's probably got some play. So as you can see here, if we go back to bishop g5, the best move was knight c3. So he should have just brought his knight out and developed a piece. He didn't for that bishop. So let's carry on. I castle, so I could have taken that pawn, but I didn't. And now we're equal, basically 0 0.1. I mean, it's practically this position is equal. So you could say uh, eight moves in, he's made a well potential semi blunder, and I've uh, not I've missed that. Now, if you look at this graph down here, you can see roughly where that blunder arrived. Bishop g5. And I missed my chance, and now at the beginning, white was better. I had a chance, I blew it. Now we're equal again. And you can see there's some more chances of me coming up here, and I probably don't take advantage of it, and then blow it again. So, knight out. Takes, takes, takes. Takes, takes. And here we can see, okay, so. It doesn't actually like my 11 g4, it's an inaccuracy. The best move was queen c7. So let's go back and see what queen c7 looked like, which is here. That's an interesting move. So, um, 
what can we say about queen c7? Queen c7 protects his pawn, gets it off the open file, protects this pawn. It is a better move. So I've learned something there. I went for bishop g4, which was a cheapo attack. I should have considered that move. Anyway, it wasn't a game losing move because it only gave an advanced slight advantage here after queen takes c6 of, 0 point, of plus 0 0.2. And what this shows me is that 12 moves in, and you know, after we play rook here and queen here, that we're still roughly equal. So overall, I could say that my opening wasn't too bad, you know. It was pretty good, um, and now you can see I just start to blunder, and that's a tragic blunder. Rook f e8 plus one. He plays bishop e3, hits my queen, and wins a pawn, and it just begins to go downhill more and more. It gets to plus 1.5, 1.7, and on, and so on, and so on. And as you can see, we get to the point where we get mega blunder here. Rook takes e5, followed by um, it was a total blunder. The best move was rook a8, hitting his queen. And now it's just so bad that the position is just over until we get absolutely crushed into oblivion. And that's it, and I resigned. So, yeah, I hope this helps. And it's... Uh, you'll spend some time analysing your game because I think it's really useful to see where you've lost it in the opening, mid game or end game and you can see obviously it just got worse and worse so um, yeah and like I say don't take these numbers don't be obsessed with these numbers when they're around between 0 0.1 and under 0 0.5 because it's just a you know valuation it's the blunders you know but you can see when somebody's beginning to build up a good position as well and uh, you'll recognise that because you'll be able to transfer it to your play. So, anyway, I hope this helped and um, leave any com comments or questions on YouTube. Thank you very much.